In this video, we're going to take a look at enhancing our material by adding some ambient occlusion as well as subsurface. Let's start with ambient occlusion. So I'm going to grab the ambient occlusion texture that I exported from my Substance Designer outputs. And I'm just going to left click and drag and drop this texture here into my shader network. Now you'll see here for the color space, I'm going to leave this set to sRGB. And that is because I'm going to multiply this ambient occlusion with my base color. So to do that, I need to add a new node. So I'll hit Shift A. And for my color, I'm going to choose Mix RGB. So now I'm going to take the resulting color value from my ambient occlusion and we'll plug this into color one and we'll do the same thing, the color output for my base color and let's plug that into the color two input of the mix RGB node. Now for the operation, we're going to set this to multiply and I'm going to set the factor to a value of one. Now before I connect this to my material, I want to make sure that my mapping coordinates are set up correctly. So if you recall in the previous video, we set some tiling here on my mapping node. I need to make sure that vector is also plugged here into my ambient occlusion node. So you can see that I can just take the result of this vector and I'll just plug it into the vector input of my ambient occlusion. Okay, so now that that's set up, I can now integrate this multiply value here to my base color input on my material. So let's make this connection here and then we'll see cycles update in the viewport. All right, so now you can see that I have this ambient occlusion information, again, multiplied to my base color. Now I'm doing this to help bring out a little more of the shape and form. And multiplying my AO with my base color is a simple way to do that. However, I do need to be careful that I don't force my base color values to go too dark. And looking at the result here, I can see that, uh, yeah, it is a bit too dark for my taste. So what I'm going to do is just add another node. So we'll hit Shift A. And I'm going to come over here to Converter and I'm going to choose to create a color ramp. Now I can just insert this color ramp between the ambient occlusion and that color one of my multiply node. So here you can see that now we can use this color ramp to process my ambient occlusion before we feed it into the multiply. So if we take a look, one of the things I would like to do is just come over to this black point and I'm going to just lift the value quite a bit. So you can see if I set this all the way to white, we get the result of, well, no ambient occlusion. And as I start to darken this, here we can see just a little bit of that ambient occlusion. And as you can see, this is going to be a subtle effect. So I'm using a fairly bright value. Now I could also come into here and I could tent this value as well. So let's just say that I want to push this maybe a little bit towards the blue value. I can do that here. So we're going to go with something maybe more like this. So we have some of this ambient occlusion, but again, we've processed it with our color map range. Now let's take a look at adding subsurface. So once again, I'm going to grab this subsurface output that I created in designer and drag and drop that here to my shader network. Now, first thing I want to make sure that my mapping coordinates are set up. So again, let me just grab that output vector from my mapping node and just plug that here into the input of my subsurface. Now for the color space in this case, this one is going to be set to non-color because it represents data. And then we're going to take the output of this subsurface and I'm going to plug that here into the subsurface input of my material. This grayscale texture will dictate the mix between diffuse and subsurface scattering on my material. It's like a mask that acts as a multiplier for the subsurface radius. So here's the result that I have thus far. Now for this subsurface effect, I want this to be extremely subtle. So we need to make some changes. First thing, let's take a look at this subsurface radius. The surface radius is the average distance that light scatters below the surface. The scattering distance is specified as RGB channels, which are mapped to XYZ coordinates and higher values give us softer appearance. Here you can see that my RGB values are just set to 0.5. Now by separating the distance into three RGB components, you are able to create materials such as skin where red light scatters at a different depth. So what I'm doing here is again, just trying to create just a subtle effect. So I'm not so much worried about being extremely accurate with this. And that's why I'm setting a value here of 0.5. Like I said, higher values will give you a softer appearance. So I'm going with something around 0.5. Now I need to set my subsurface color. So I'm gonna click this color swatch and I'm going to just tent this with kind of a warm value. So here we're getting something like this. Now, just as we did with our ambient occlusion, 
What I'd like to be able to do is process this subsurface map right here directly in my shader network. So once again, I'm going to hit Shift A, and underneath Converter, I'm going to add another color ramp. And let's make sure that we insert this ramp between our subsurface and our material. Now here, I can jump over to my white point, and I can lower this value to get a very, very subtle effect. So for example, if we set this all the way to a black value, this is what we had before. And now let's just slightly increase this value to add just a little subtle effect of subsurface. And now this is what we're getting here. Here I have a render of the scene. You can see in these areas, the effect of adding subsurface. I've also pretty much left the default settings for my rendering. I did limit the max subdivisions to six to speed up the render. In the next video, I'm going to work with the compositing nodes to add some depth of field as a post effect.